been a while since I've done a walk around on my Toyota pickup. So I'm doing another, I'm doing another walk around. This is my third generation 95 22RE all motor or whatever you want to call it. SAS Chevy 63 up front. No, um in the back. <coughs> and then uh Toyota Soul Axle up front. 38 Swampers on B locks. These are 16 by 8 and 38 by 13 by 16 didn't do too much didn't do anything new lately just install these beautiful 12 inch LED side lights <clears throat> gives it better appearance now in my opinion <clears throat> oh I also went ahead and <clears throat> since it's getting dark in Alaska now I went ahead and got rid of my tent. So my tent is about, my tent is this color, I think it's 20% or so. <clears throat> so I got rid of the tent on both windows, except for these uh, openers, and I didn't get rid of the tent. I kept the tent on these and on the back. But for the two doors, I removed them. Just because it's getting dark now in Alaska and when I drive at night time, it's really hard for me to see anything. So having tent just makes it worse. <clears throat> Other than that, oh, I did install, <coughs> I did install some new uh, bump stops. <coughs> the last trip we did out to Eureka, I was hitting up, I was hitting my tie rods, <coughs> and that was because I didn't have any bump stops. It's really dark, so you can't really see it, but. <coughs> I made it from uh, DIY. I made it from uh, two inch square tubing. <coughs> two inch square tubing. I actually did a video on it, I think. No, I didn't do a video, but uh, maybe I'll do another video next time. But two inch square tubing with some bump stops that I got for free at GTF. And then uh, bolt them on and welded them on. On, on the rear, I did the same thing as well. <coughs> Except for the rear, I went with two of them, so you have four inches of square tubing plus the bump stop itself. So that's a total of about roughly six inches of extension. And um, I haven't really had a, I really had time to test it out yet. I haven't had any time to flex it out, but um. I haven't done any off-roading lately too. It's been about two weeks since the last trip we did. <coughs> I also did go ahead and install some new um, eye bolts just to help with tie downs and bungee cores. So got three on each side. <coughs> my truck is loaded up though. It's loaded up with my generator, uh, my chainsaw, my canopy, my tent. Just bought this new Mr. Buddy. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I have five gallons. I have 25 gallons of gas. <clears throat> one, one five gallon, 20 gallons here, and then I have, um, I have 10 gallons of water, and then this tote here is my food and cooking and utensils. So I'm pretty much packed up for the next expedition trip that's coming up in the next two weeks <coughs> so I will keep you guys updated but for right now I'm not giving you guys too many info on that I also I didn't know if I show you guys this but <coughs> this is where I keep my spare tie rod this is a my original tie rod that came with it it was bent and then I went and bought a new one and then my old one that was bent <coughs> I took it to GTF and Dan uh, Dan the owner at GTF was able to bend it back so it's pretty straight so I decided to just tie this down to my slider with some <clears throat> um, hose clamp hose clamp with some neoprene to uh, give it some cushion and it's really tight on there but that's my spare in case I ever need it it really blends in I'm pretty sure you, I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't even know it unless I told you guys but that's a spare tie rod and the nice thing about that one is that that's the same size as my drag and my tie rod on the back. Some people like to call this the drag link 
in the back the tie rod vice versa whatever you want to call it but they're all the same size so if this one gets bent or that one gets bent I can swap them out with that one other than that guys there hasn't been much anything new recently just pretty much a little bit of tweaks here and there so I'll keep you guys updated hope you guys enjoy this quick update vlog on the crawler um, I also did do a fluid flush so I went ahead after that Eureka trip that we did <coughs> we went through some crazy water Um, so I actually ended up when I drained my transfer case uh, differential oil. No, when I drained the transfer case oil, it was completely white. And I'll put a photo up of that. But it was water must have got in there somehow. Must must have been from the breather. But I drained that out. Um, I drained my transmission oil, which was clean. And I drained my rear and front differential oil, which was clean. And then I also drained my motor oil and put new motor oil, put new front and rear differential oil, put new tranny oil, and then put new trans uh, T-case oil. And then for the T-case oil and the motor oil, I also added Lucas, Lucas, Lucas oil stabilizer. And it definitely made the engine a little bit more quieter now. So a lot of people run it, run oil stabilizer, and I have nothing. I have, I have heard nothing but good things about Lucas oil stabilizer. So this is my first time running it, and I have noticed that it does run a little bit more quieter. So I like it. Okay, guys, that's it for the crawler update for July. Today's July 31st. Last day of July, guys. It's almost August. It feels a bit chilly already. I'll see you guys next time. I'll keep you guys updated. Make sure you guys watch the Instagram stories at Nutty New and also at Nutty New Instagram 4x4. Nutty New underscore 404. I'll keep you guys updated on the loop. I'll see you guys next time. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more videos. Bye-bye.